Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. And today, I would like to share my thoughts on Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest Episode 2, which I absolutely loved even more than the first episode from last week, which, man, let me tell you, they hit the ground running here. This is definitely an anime series where you have to watch the original series to fully understand what's going on here because while the first episode was obviously there to bridge the gap between the original series and the sequel series, reintroducing the characters and sort of, you know, giving you some background information with you, when we get to episode two, you know, they fully expect you to know who these characters are and if you're someone like myself who has read the original manga series, has watched the original anime series, watched the OVAs, the movies, and have read most of 100 Years Quest, it's like seeing old friends. And what I love so much about Fairy Tale is how it's more than just a shonen anime manga series. There, there's so many other elements incorporated into it, from comfy slice of life moments, to the humor, to fan service like you couldn't imagine. Like, the fan service is so good, people were worried there'd be some scenes that were censored, you know, from the manga to the anime. But no, they don't shy away from anything. In fact, we sort of have a beach episode already in episode two in that our characters are underwater, so they're in their bathing suits and things like that. And Fairy Tale, you know, every anime has the beach episode, but Fairy Tale has had like dozens of beach episodes. In fact, they even have that one OVA episode where they go to the water park. So, and that being an OVA is definitely more, uh, <laughs> more raunchy than the regular episodes. So, lots of good stuff. Um, Introducing new characters, which again, two new characters only from the 100 Years Quest manga series. So this is the first time we've, we've put a voice to their face in Kivia and Mad Mole. And I have to say, especially with Kivia, these characters sound exactly how I imagined they would sound when I was reading the manga, you know, many, many months ago. So that's always a good thing. Lots of battles, um, Natsu with his classic power friendship speech which the way they did that he puts his fist in the ground he's doing the power friendship they got the the great fairy tale ost playing in the background which is is the the same song from the original series and i mentioned that last week how they brought back quite a number of, of the, the the music from the original series brought back to 100 years quest the new opening and ending are fantastic it's just great i love it so much so let's go through some of the screenshots elaborate more on it there's our lovely ladies, Urza, Wendy, and Lucy. And I have to say, a very colorful series. And I wonder if this is always like Mashima's intention in that the characters, they all have different color hairstyles. They change their outfits quite often. In Urza's case, that's her, her magic, re-quipping. She always changes armors to suit, you know, who she's fighting against. In Lucy's case, the celestial spirit dresses. But even, you know, Wendy changed her outfit, Grey and Natsu changed their outfits a lot. Grey just sort of strips, but <laughs> you get the idea. So they made their way to the continent of, of Giltina, the, the port town of Ermina, looking for Merkphobia, the water god dragon, which in the first episode they met Elefseria, who uh, gave them the 100 years quest. They got to go around and either slay or seal away the five dragon gods. So right away, I mean, we see Lucy's titties are all on full display. There, <laughs> there's so many great shots of that. It's just, oh, they don't shy away. Um, but they, they, like I said, the port town, they, they come in contact with, with a talking fish, to which Gray's saying a fish, and then Natsu's hassling the fish, and it turns out he's a human, and it gives them this, this potion so that they can breathe underwater. Uh, cue the beach episode. <laughs> But obviously we have water because of, of Merkphobia, the water god dragon. Uh, we have <laughs> our, our, our heroes with their derpy faces, which, why does Wendy, why is she the only one who has her pupils still out? <laughs> I always found that kind of funny. Uh, they think that the potion is a poison, and eventually they take it, they wake up, and they're underwater. So we get some, some swimsuit action, of course, lots of great stuff. This is some foreshadowing for later with, with Wendy as a jellyfish. You'll see why, or obviously if you watch the episode, you know why. Urza decides she wants to have a racing contest with this this character named Sharkette, which just typical Mashima. Let's let's just have a shark with lipstick on. Call it Sharkette. 
<laughs> I mean, what the hell? And I love how Urza's like, let's let's race, Sharkette. Let's go. <laughs> and Sharkette, okay, let's go, Urza. So they're getting along with, with the fish at first, but eventually one of them mentions how they, they're looking for Merkphobia, and the fish turn on them, get all mad, and, and say, You would dare harm our Shujin Sama, how could you? So Natsu gives his power of friendship speech. If they hurt my friends, even a scratch. And you get like the classic OST. And there's actually a moment because, you know, Natsu is the fire dragon slayer. He uses his magic, which obviously fire is not going to work underwater. And he's he's shocked by that. Typical Natsu. Like, what do you mean fire doesn't work underwater? <laughs> what do you expect? Oh, and of course there's the B plot going. And that's another thing I love so much about Fairy Tail. There's so many characters. We have, we have enough characters to split up. We have the A plot with Team Natsu slaying the dragon gods, and then the B plot where this new character named Toka appears looking for Natsu. And the B plot is involving Gajil, Juvia, and Panther Lily investigating her, wondering, you know, what she's doing here. And then later on, we actually see Jalal, who is also looking for her, but he can't really say, at, at, at this moment anyway. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> we have Toka, who's just scheming over there, hanging out with Lasana, Mira Jane, and Elfman. And Ju <laughs> Juvia's getting jealous because Toka mentioned in the first episode from last week all of Grey's potential love interests from Or, Altir, uh, Kana, I think Mira Jane, you know, so on and so forth. And then Briar, which that's the one that really tipped off Gajiel because she's the one with the Dark Guild avatar. And that's classified information, so Gajiel's like, well, how does she know that? And Juvia's getting jealous, of course. But the two of them are looking, right? And they notice that Toka has a tail! Whoa, whoa, what's this? Why does she have a tail? <laughs> so, I like, make note of the tail's color and the pattern there. They're thinking about it, and <laughs> the question mark is in the same uh, color scheme, the same pattern as the tail, which I thought was so funny. Just look at their faces, man, it's just hilarious. So it cuts over to Sabretooth, which now Sorino, formerly with the Arashion Sace, and even for a short while with Crime Sorcier, Jalal's guild, has joined Sabretooth with her sister Yukino. And I'm not going to show this every time because I can probably do this for every panel, but this is just an easy enough comparison where that's the manga panel and that's the, the anime. So it's, it's there. I think it's really cute. So the two sisters are right there. Lots of good stuff. We get to see, see Sabretooth already. There's Rogue and Sting. They have new outfits now. Which Rogue has this sword. Does he ever even use this sword? He just carries it around. He never uses it. And then Frosh and Lecter. And Frosh doing his, his classic. Fro Nasama! Fro thinks so too. It's so cute. Look at this little guy. And then Jalal shows up. And he has a picture of Toka. To which he shows them and says, you know. Have you seen this girl? And they're like, well not really. And... Then there's a, a fun moment here with Minerva, where she's like, Oh, are you seeing her instead of your lovely Urza? What's the meaning of this, Jalal? Jal <laughs> Jalal's getting all upset. Like, no, it's not what you think it is. So, okay, <laughs> back to the fish. Here's what I'm talking about the fan service, man. So the fish are attacking them. Of course, oh, there goes Lucy's bathing suit. <laughs> and she's freaking out. Although this happens pretty regularly, so I don't know what she's so upset about. And she ends up using Natsu's scarf as, you know, her top there. Okay? But Natsu's not having it. Give me, give me back my, <laughs> my scarf. She's like, no, what are you doing? And he suggests, well, don't you have all these celestial spirit keys? Summon one of them and have them bring forth a star dress or whatever. Uh, so their poor girl getting, <laughs> getting her top. And Gray's like, I've seen this shit a million times already. It's nothing new. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Just the way she was screaming. It was, it was so funny. So she, she does her star dress transformation to Aquarius form as she's talking about she can't catch your break. First the fish are attacking her, taking off her, her bathing suit, then Natsu and Natsu's like, well, what do you expect? <laughs> so, I mean, you're like, come on, man, look at this. <laughs> Just the angles, it's incredible. And same with Urza, she's running around in her bikini too, of course. Lots of good stuff, and I mentioned the colors earlier. But obviously they're underwater, so we have like a darker shading here. But eventually you can, uh, the waters part ways, so you see them in color again. So lots of good stuff. Uh, oh, Lucy's great idea here. You ready for this? To blend in with the fish, why not transform into fish? <laughs> and there's Wendy as the jellyfish, 
which I don't know why she turned into a jellyfish but everyone else a fish and not to his scarf and just look at Urza's face crazy like what the hell what am I with these guys what's going on here but so cute man turned it into the fish happy so excited because of course happy loves eating fish but he's in a predicament here because he's like wait a minute if I've been eating fish my whole life now I'm a fish what what do I do <laughs> and Wendy why am I a jellyfish and then eventually we see Kidia, who's who's in a cage here, and was going to be the sacrifice for Merkphobia, except she was just playing a decoy to, you know, take Merkphobia's powers for her own. So we get the the name card of her, she's with the Wizard Guild Diabolos, and she's what she refers to as fifth generation Dragon Slayer, the Dragon Eaters. And there's a whole bit of backstory there. Just to go over it briefly, the original first generation Dragon Slayers are like Natsu, Wendy, Gajil. Then the second generation have the Lacrima embedded in them. That's Loxus and Cobra. Then third generation are trained by the dragons, but also have Lacrima. That's Sting and Rogue. And then the fourth generation were like the dragon soldiers from the Dragon Cry movie, the second fairy tale movie, which I always thought that was cool. There's two fairy tale movies and they're both canon. They're both, you can fit them into the main story. A lot of anime movies are kind of just side stories to have the characters. Uh, but those two movies are in fact canon. Uh, but yeah, there's Kidia and they're just like, what is going on? <laughs> and we see this, this isn't actually, Mer that's what Merkovia looks like, but this turns out to just be a decoy, the messenger, if you will. And you see, she's all caged up because she was going to be uh, eaten by him. But really, she was going to be the one eating him, take away his powers. And she does. And I can fix her. She may be crazy, but she's hot. And I can fix her. <laughs> so she slices through. Starts fighting Lucy at first, which it proves to be no match for her. Because, uh-oh, <laughs> Lucy's in another bathing suit. Gotta take it off. And look at Natsu's face. Oh, <laughs> as if he hasn't seen them before. So then Madmole shows up, the armor dragon. And Madmole... In the manga, and also in the anime here, he has this saying where at the end of every sentence, he says, Cha. C-H-A. And I always thought he was kind of like a surfer, bro. Like, he was like a joking character, like, Cha, come on, Cha, man. But in this case, he says it so quietly, and he's actually really serious. You can tell by his face right there. And it's just like, he'll say a sentence, and then he just goes, Cha, Cha. So, I thought that was, uh, that was cool. And he shows up to protect Kidia from Urza, as you just saw, the armored dragon, and uh, Urza's sword stands no chance. So eventually, the water parts, and Mark Markphobia shows himself, and we see Kidia in, in more color now. You saw it was sort of darkened before, just because they're underwater. So you see her in her full glory, of course. Uh, but there's Markphobia, and that's where it ends. So... Lots of good stuff. I did want to just show you this as well, another comparison. This is Kidia's design in the manga and her design in the anime. And I have to say, I I like her design in the anime more. I like, like, her hair looks better in the anime, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. She looks crazier in the manga, and she is crazy. That's that's her character. She's, she's a psycho. Um... And she, but she's still hot, okay? <laughs> but I think she looks better. And she still has the crazy look. You can see with the smile. Uh, but I think just her ha her hair looks nicer in the anime. And we always knew she was a blondie because in one of the covers, she's on there with the blonde hair. So we've always known, and same with her armor, what little she's wearing. <laughs> if you want to even call it armor. <laughs> but yeah, I dude, I love this episode. I thought it was fantastic. Um, you know, really looking forward to, to next week. What more can I even say? It's, it's just, it's, I'm glad I can, I can do this again because for a while, I, well, really, I don't really ever like watching anime weekly just because I like to binge watch anime, but in Fairy Tales case, I've already read the manga, so it's kind of just like revisiting it, and now I can, I can hear the characters again. I'm really looking forward to the English dub, although when the English dub comes out, I'll wait and just binge watch it all at the end once all the episodes are out there. Uh, I do believe it's going to be 25 episodes for this first season here. And because I, it's airing on Crunchyroll, I think, which, you know, I'm not watching there. I'm, I have other, other sources, of course. 
Um, but with, with that, Crunchyroll is pretty quick about how they get English dubs out there. So I would say like maybe by episode four or five, they'll have the first episode of the English dub. And I'm definitely looking forward to like who who's gonna voice Kiria in the English dub because her Japanese voice actor is fantastic. Like it's it's perfect. Uh, so definitely looking forward to who the English dub voice actor is gonna be. And yeah, what more can I even say? So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for my review of episode 3 next week. Uh, there's going to be some pretty pretty crazy shit with Kidia and Urza. Either next week's episode or episode 4. Uh, where if you read the manga, you already know. But it's like... <laughs> that's why I say the fan service is, is turned up like to 200% in, in 100 Years Quest compared to the original series just because of the crazy shit that's going to go down and again already having like a, a pseudo beach episode underwater although this is Kitty's regular attire so when we see her again in, in later episodes even after this intro arc she'll be uh she'll be rocking that look for sure and definitely looking forward to seeing Celine later who might be even more attractive than Kitty. <laughs> but anyway thank you guys so much for watching let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and stay tuned for more videos coming soon everybody have a great day and peace out. 99.